If you haven't had time to decorate for St. Patrick's Day, it's not too late. I got you covered. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. For project number one, we're going to be using some Dollar Tree items. We're going to make a wreath. You're going to need possibly some flowers and some greenery. I got these cute little shamrock picks of two different colors from Dollar Tree. So there's a dark pick and then a pick that's light and dark. I'm going to use two of these gorgeous little scarves and a shamrock frame. I'm also going to use some of these. This is a berry garland. Mine came from Christmas at Dollar Tree, but you can get it pretty much year round. I'm going to use a variety of ribbons, both thrifted and Dollar Tree. So we're going to start off by covering this frame and we're going to do it with the scarf. It only takes one scarf to do this and one zip tie. So we're going to start by just kind of bunching up the bottom and we want to have a little piece that we can attach with the zip tie. So I'm going to go around the frame in the middle and cross the, the center section there so that it won't move around when we're putting this on and this will kind of lock it in place. So once we get it where we want it, just go ahead and cut that off. I'm just using some little cutters here, but you can certainly use an old pair of scissors if you have them. I'm going to tuck that to the inside of the frame. And then rather than just wrapping this around tightly all the way around, which would cause you to have to use more than one scarf, we are going to stretch this out and get full coverage by doing it the right way. So I'm going to start by adding a little bit of glue and taking the edge of that scarf and just wrapping it right there. Make sure that you're flipping the right side out when you do this so that you get the pretty side. You don't want your words to be backwards. So you can see I'm kind of pulling this down. I'm going to leave it ruched slightly. I don't want to have all of the, you know, wrinkles out of it. But I want to make sure that I am really stretching it as far as I can take it. So that my $1.25 scarf will make it all the way around this entire frame. And it's a pretty big frame. It's very impressive to have gotten something like this from Dollar Tree. And of course I should have picked up two so that I would be certain to have one for next year. Because you know how it goes at Dollar Tree. When you see it, you better get it. Alright. So I'm going to continue along here and just wrap around those corners and especially around the corners and the insides of the of the wreath you want to make sure that you just add little dots of glue you don't need to make a mess just something to kind of keep it where it needs to be and you can see so far that I've got all of the scarf that I need to make it around the top part of this shamrock which was very nice so I'm just doing the same thing I did before and I wanted to leave all of this in so you could see that it does fit now I'm gonna take the second one and do the bottom part doesn't that look nice I love the variety of colors there so I'm going to now work on the bottom I'm just seeing how much I think I'm going to need here and it needs to be enough to go over the front and then overlap the back and attach together on the back side. So I'm just going to fold this over so none of my raw seams are poking out. And I'm going to cover the frame. I'm going to make sure I have about an inch and a half on the bottom so that I can overlap it. And enough to cover the bottom part. So you can see here we have a nice edge. I'm just folding this under around that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just kind of pulling it and rolling it over. Gives it a nice flat finish on the front. Maybe kind of messy in the back, but we're going to fix that when we pull this piece over. I'm going to pull it over and then glue it right down. Then, of course, you want to bend up the bottom and then overlap it and kind of sandwich it in. So now the frame is complete and we're going to work on a bow. I'm going to use my thrifted ribbon here. 
this stuff catches on everything, but it's so pretty. It gives a really nice, a really nice look. So you can see here how I'm measuring my loops and I'm gonna continue along with 12 inch loops or 12 inch pieces, which are gonna make six inch loops. And I wanna be sure that I do four of these because I almost want it to kind of give you an idea of a four leaf clover, right? I mean, it's St. Patrick's Day. Don't we want a little luck? Of course we do. So you can see there, four leaves. I'm gonna clip it. And then I'm going to take a zip tie and zip it up. Originally, I had a different type of second bow, but don't be bothered by the one you see in the corner up there because I'm gonna change it. I decided to change it. So now I'm just pulling this down and I've got my four leaves. Now, this is the bow that we're going to do to go on top. And it's gonna be about eight inch. You're gonna do eight inches and then fold it over and over so that you have two loops on each end. And that will give you another bow with four loops. How perfect is that? And this is such an easy bow. I'm gonna take a piece of jute because maybe you don't have zip ties. And I'm going to just give this a couple of knots in the center. This is some really strong jute and I really like that. So we're gonna fluff that bow out and get it ready to go right across the other bow. So go on between two of the loops so that there's two on one side, two on the other. I'm gonna wrap that jute around and I'm gonna give it a few knots and that's gonna hold it nicely in place. All right, so there we go. And then you can fluff a little bit. And I wanna make sure that it is going across the center and the stem part of the clover. You see how I did that? And that's just so our bow does not move around when we fluff it. I don't want it to lose the position. So it's kind of locked into place when you put it like this. And you see I have very long tails on that bow, that sheer bow underneath. I love that, that's exactly how I want it. You can trim yours down if you would like. And then you can trim down the little tails on the inside of the short bow. I'm just cutting mine in a slant. And then move things around. That's the beauty of not having glue here, right? You can move things around and you can make that bow look however you want. That's why it takes so much fluffing to make a bow look gorgeous. I get a lot of comments on my bows and I really appreciate that. But for those of you who lack confidence in your bow making skills, just keep fluffing and I promise you're gonna come up with something beautiful. So now it's time to embellish the bow, right? We're gonna add some greenery to it because, you know, rustic and cottage, you know how we do here. I'm going to just kind of look at how I want it placed before I put the glue on and then I'll start placing it down. And I kind of want this to be a little bit wild and going around and just accentuating and really setting off my pretty bow. And by the way, if you choose to use green ribbon, you can certainly do that. Dollar Tree does have green ribbon and maybe you have some thrifted ribbon that maybe you used for Christmas. You loved it then, you can love it now. Pull that stuff back out and use it. So just want to put it here and there and I'm using, you know, a variety. I'm using some of my mixed shamrocks and I'm using some of the darker ones. And then I thought, you know what? I'd really like to add something on a smaller scale with a little more body to it. So these little picks that I also had thrifted fit perfectly into that. The coloring is great. It's kind of variegated and that looks really nice with the different colored shamrocks and it just all fits in really well together, I think. Now we're gonna make some of these little twirly looking pieces. See how easy that is? You can use a pencil though, you don't have to use a chopstick. Whatever you have and then trim it down the way you like it. And this is just gonna add, just gonna add a little magic to it. Gonna add some little flyaways to it. And kind of give it that little, you know, it just makes it a little more charming, I think. And what is St. Patrick's Day if not magical, right? So just keep adding, look at it from all sides, like I always say, and from up and down, and make it just like you like it. There is no right or wrong when you are making your own creations. 
Okay, so now you just see me taking a little piece of that same jute and making a little hanger for it. I'm going to put it up here in the center top and add some glue and that's how it's going to be hung. Project number two, we are also using Dollar Tree items. We're going to start with this little laundry room sign and I'm going to take some window cleans. Don't we love these? This is such easy projects. I'm so glad that y'all are here with me today and you're watching these little last minute ideas. You're gonna choose whichever ones you like and then take your chalk paint and just cover up this laundry room wording. It's very cute as it is. And by the way, I do have another one that I may just be using in my laundry room. But after it is done and dried, you can see, it took me two coats though to get all that black wording covered up and don't worry it is slightly indented into there you're not going to notice so now you get to do the fun part which is playing around with how you want your picture to look I'm giving you a couple of different ideas then you're going to take that Mod Podge you can also get that at Dollar Tree you can also get flat brushes at the Dollar Tree you see what I'm doing here you see where I'm going with this theme here and then I'm just going to add down the ones that I've chose and I decided just to use the truck with Lucky on the back and Irish across the top. I do have a little Irish in me, y'all. I had my little ancestry things done and I have a little bit of Irish, not much. Okay, so we're gonna go over here and then lock it all in place with the Mod Podge. This will make everything have a matte finish and it'll look like it was meant to be. Project number three. We're gonna use some more window clings. So this time I have a little mason jar and this one came from Christmas. You can just cut off that little piece there. I'm gonna take my utility knife and score this because I do not want to remove that metal looking top. Even though that's drawn on there, that's actually an applique, I want it to stay there and I don't wanna scrape it off accidentally. And I don't want it to get wet when I do this part. I'm just covering it to protect it, spraying it with some water, and then rubbing my hands all over it because it did not want to peel off easily. You can see I tried to peel it. So I decided to wet it down and now I'm using a little, it's like a little chisel tool or a woodworking tool that I happen to have got in a set at Dollar Tree. And I'm just scraping this off. You can sand it too. Whichever way you like to remove it will be absolutely fine. So once that is done, it's clean and dry, you can go ahead and paint it. Now this time I'm using a different, um, a different color white. This one is plaster. This has a little bit more of a cream color um, instead of that bright white. I love that and I think it's gonna be perfect for this little piece. I'm just gonna cover everything except that top want to leave that there we're gonna set it aside and let it dry now once it's done even though it's not perfect I don't mind that you can either grab that glue stick or you can use that Mod Podge again either way I'm gonna choose which appliques I want to put on it and this little truck happened to be an almost a perfect fit no worries we're gonna trim it down you can cut off the excess and I also cut the little you can see there's like a little shadow of mud on the tires I cut that off as well. Cut it as much as you need to to get it to fit. And look at that, perfect. So now I'm gonna lay down a layer of Mod Podge all over where I'm gonna be putting my little appliques and then put them where they need to go. I'm gonna use two. So I'm gonna use this little honk if you're Irish and the Happy St. Patrick's Day banner that was on there now it's going to be trimmed down quite a bit to fit but that's okay you know that's easy to do and then you can just keep laying it down looking at it eyeballing it and trimming it till you get it exactly the right size to go on yours and then once it's down same process we're going to take some more Mod Podge and lock it in place it wasn't that easy and so cheap once it is dry I'm going to take a little bit of this this is like a 
kind of a lacy trim piece uh, it's made out of like burlap that my husband bought from Amazon he bought it in a pack and I thought this cream color looked really nice with this so I'm just going to glue it on the back and then add a dot of glue on the front to hold it in place now if you want to add something extra take one of your extra shamrocks from the earlier project and just glue it on here but I think it's perfect just the way it is but you do you and make it perfectly you here are our little items all staged I love the little jar I think it's so cute there are times when you can find these at Dollar Tree but they usually go fast that's why I wanted to make them to show you that you could still have that look if you like it I believe in you I want you to believe in yourself I want you to stop doubting that you're creative we all are we all have that little spark that God gave us we all have creativity inside of us and we can do this we can make beautiful things for our home I would love for you to subscribe if you're new here and learn come along with us as we learn how to make beautiful creations with thrifted and Dollar Tree items that's what this channel is all about and of course I like to give you some encouragement along the way here is that shamrock if you just were to hang that up on your door or on your wall I appreciate you all so much I love your comments I love the relationship that we have here on this channel encouraging one another and lifting each other up thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again real soon bye